Navigating the web design landscape has become more challenging than ever before, with new tools and trends constantly emerging and a surge of aspiring designers joining the wave. But here's the thing, if you want to future-proof your career and stand out from the crowd, master the fundamentals. In this video, I will share with you the seven laws of good web design to help you bridge the gap to being an industry leader. Let's go. Hello my friends, if you're new to this channel and you want to stay up to date with my latest videos covering advanced web design and business skills, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Okay, so good web design is number one, effective. This means that it takes into account three factors. Number one, the business goals of the company that you're working for. Number two, usability, has to be user friendly, right? And number three, aesthetics. So it has to be visually pleasing. So these three factors are equally important for a website to be effective and they should be balanced harmoniously. Now, it doesn't matter how beautiful your website is. If it doesn't tackle the business goals, it's not well designed. Conversely, if a website is not visually pleasing, it won't be easy to understand and to use, right? And thus, it won't tackle the business goals. So. Aesthetics are an important part of how effective a website is. They are just not the only part. And if a designer focuses solely on the, the aesthetics and forgets about the usability and the business goals, that's really just cosmetics, not design. Okay, so the second law is good web design is meaningful. So good web design does, does only meaningful decisions, regardless of trends. It focuses on the unique edge of the brand and weaves storytelling to clearly communicate the value of the business. Every decision, whether a usability, business or aesthetic decision, needs to have a reason anchored to the business. Designers shouldn't make decisions based on what's popular at the time they design, okay? So let me show you an example of this. This website, I designed it, I don't know, maybe five, seven years ago and it was designed for oscilloscope it's a a film production company and so i you know i made a lot of decisions based on on that on being a film production company from the intro that you can see here where it's like flickering and it has a 3 to 1 kind of like old movies two things like kodak here that you know the, that little frame um, where it says kodak and Things like, for example, when you get into this um, the website, you will see you know animations and things that are related to um, cameras and stuff like that, right? Has like a vintage type of vibe, and everything has like a meaning, right? There's nothing that that is like random and was based on a trend that I saw, like something on Dribble or something that was trendy on the time, okay? So that's a very important law of good web design. You have to make sure that every decision that you make is based on something that's meaningful and that is not based on a trend that is popular at the time they, that, that you're designing. Number three, intentional, right? When we start with a blank canvas, we start making decisions about size, color, position, etc. And we tend to think that our subtle one pixel change in size is noticeable by anyone. But we forget that it's only obvious to us because we made that decision, but that to make it obvious for everyone else, then we need to make more intentional changes. So let me show you what I mean. Let's see the difference between, for example, this website where we have 54 or almost 55 pixels. First off, it has decimals on the on the size font size very weird second of all right here we have a very similar title that if you look at it looks pretty much the same size right but if we take a closer look it has 48 almost 48 pixels in size why not just do you know um, a, a much bigger difference right because here we are we have a title of the whole page right so why not go bolder than that and just make something bigger and for this one make it smaller for example um, you don't need to have 
such a small difference or even this take a look at this 16 pixels here and 14 pixels here why two sizes here why not use the same right so these are like you can we're talking here the, about typography but there's a lot of applications where this law is you know found and i found that this law applies to every aesthetic decision that you make and really every usability uh, decision that you make as well so number four good design is sophisticated or in other words simple so but web design has a lot of excess excess of type sizes colors typefaces concepts visual techniques image treatments etc good web design is simple and free of excess so it uses as minimal resources as possible to achieve the desired result and this is opposite from simplistic design okay it's not simplistic so we're talking about simplicity which is the ultimate sophistication right so not about cookie cutter websites so for example let me show you the hierarchies and go let's go back here to this hierarchies right we have 16 we have 14.4 we have 54 we have 30 we have 18 right so there's a lot of sizes here that could be simplified into a much simpler typography system right and i talk more about typography systems and how to create the perfect one in this video okay but and by the way i also talk about meaningful decisions in this video as well so there's a lot of videos that you can take a look to go more in depth about this in my channel okay so um let's go back to this law right this is a very complex typography system it has too many sizes that are very similar looking but um, and, and that is and that is not really needed like there's a lot of sizes that are not really needed let me show you this one on the other hand right this is a, a design that i did and i use a small number of typographic sizes on my you know on my designs on my websites so for example here we have 114 pixels right that's the size of h1 the main title then we have 48 and you're gonna see that for example if you scroll here we have 48 again here we have 40, 48 again but with all caps right same size but different um, styling basically it's uppercase here we have again 48 here we're gonna have again 48 again again right so there's repetition of the sizes and w I'm not changing sizes all the time right and if we go to for example another page right if we go we go to our facility you will see that here that the size of the title is 150 um, and 14 like on the other uh, page right 114 so every title that is h1 is 114 every title that is secondary is or an h2 is 48 pixels and that translates to all the sizes okay so that's uh, what i mean with sophisticated so number five good web design is natural so nature is our original source of inspiration personally i think god is the best designer but whether you believe in god or not the truth is that nature is the benchmark of what's aesthetic and functional and what isn't so by observing nature carefully we can learn a great deal about how to design for example during golden hour every element in a landscape will be dyed with a warm tone from the sun that's setting down in our websites this could mean a group of images graded with the same color treatment or a, co or a color palette that has a warm color as an overlay that ties all colors together so let me show you an example here here i have a design that i made and i added a circle just to give an example now what if i want to unify this two right i just picked here a very random brown and so i wanted to unify this and to do that i just draw a rectangle right and i put it the fill of this color which is ff3d00 so i did that for this fill and i put it at 20 percent opacity and soft light for the blending mode okay and that creates this color palette if you color pick the brown now from this um, from this overlay 
you get this new brown. And this new brown, it has a little bit of, of that red. And that's why it feels more cohesive. So this is one way to show that good web design is natural, okay? The other thing I want to show you as an example is this animation, right? Animations have to mimic physics in real world. And I talk more about animations in this video if you haven't watched it yet. But animations mimic real life in how objects move in real world. So that's why I say that good web design is natural. So number six, good web design is memorable. If people cannot tell your website from all the rest in the same industry, there's a huge problem. I think good web design should be so unique and meaningful that whoever comes across the website doesn't forget it, okay? It should help set apart the business it was designed for from other businesses doing the same thing. So here is a, an investment management firm website that it did and, you know, has a, all sorts of custom, you know, details and typefaces and animations, interactions, stuff like that, right? And it, on the other hand, we have a very quick, cookie cutter anime like website with a very templated look, very templated layout, um, no animations and just very cookie cutter, right? This is not a memorable website that you're going to see it and remember it. It's, it's just one of the, you know, of the many. Now, this one is a, a, a bit of a more custom experience. Look how, for example, the, the logo transitions between a big size and then a horizontal size, right? There's a lot of details like this that make it more custom and more memorable. And I think good web design should be memorable. Now, to tie and wrap it up, right? Number seven is timeless. Good web design is timeless. As a result of all the previous laws, correctly applied, good web design becomes timeless. Like any good design, it can always be updated and improved, but the core decisions should remain the same. This is because the decisions and choices are anchored to the business mission, the goals and the value that the business provides, which are things that change very little throughout time, okay? Rather than on temporary trends that come and go, and are bound to die soon, right? So if you tie your decisions to trends and things that are, that are bound to die, eventually that's gonna be outdated very soon, right? And that's not gonna do a good service for you nor for your clients, okay? So I think good web design is timeless. Amazing, my friends. Now you know the seven laws of good web design and you're ready to start putting them into practice. If you learned something, give this video a like, please, and remember to subscribe and enable notifications. And if you want to learn more about web design and freelancing for free, I have free courses in the description below that you can check out. Now, if you're finding my content valuable, imagine all you could learn inside of my signature program, the Web Design Masterclass. This is my mentorship program where you will learn advanced web design skills and learn how to monetize them so you can have more freedom to do the things that you love. We have a group coaching calls every week where I answer questions and give feedback to the Bond Club members and you can connect with other like-minded designers who are in the same boat as you are. So if you want to join, then click the link below to apply. I will schedule a call with you and so we can chat and decide if it's the right fit for you. And hey, mastering this loss takes time, but at least now you know what to invest your energy on. So you got this, my friend. Let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time. Check out this playlist next to keep learning.